My name is Pete and welcome to my garage. Welcome back to Pete's Garage where today we are going to get a drive shaft made and make this vehicle mobile, which basically I can just make the transmission move the back wheels. I still got a little bit more to do with the front end and everything and getting the cooling system hooked up, but we're making really good progress on this thing and getting really close to having a completed car. So let's get to making this drive shaft. Show you what I got. All right, my differential flange has six evenly spaced bolts that are eight by 125 millimeters. However, getting a six bolt adapter that is this exact size for a custom drive shaft is next to impossible. I have exhausted almost every avenue that I can think of as far as buying something off the shelf that will work on this car. What I've, what I've come up with is this right here. This is a flange by Spicer. This uses a 1350 style U-joint. So that's a big beefy U-joint because we're going to put some power through this thing and I'm going to connect it to my stock differential I don't know how long it's going to last, but at least I can get the thing rolling and then uh, visit the differential a little bit later down the road. So you can see right here, this is four bolts and these are seven sixteenths of an inch bolt. So this is standard. The flange on the other on the BMW is metric. So I needed to make some kind of adapter. All right, so I'm trying to make my diff flange adapter. Piece of extruded aluminum. This is four and a half inches in diameter. So I need to make it to adapt to my pinion so I can adapt it to this Spicer yoke style that I can put a 1350U joint. Kind of imagine my differential being on the other side of this, the pinion. But it's a six bolt pinion then I got to be able to bolt this to this so as you can see it doesn't rest fully down there so I need to put a little recess in there to accept that and then obviously we need to drill and tap some holes that line up with these and so I have plotted them out on some graph paper here all right welcome back and I am here at my buddy Adam's shop all right we are going to mill out this piece of aluminum so we can have an adapter to adapt my homemade drive shaft to the BMW differential. I may change it up in the future and go with an 8.8, .8, but this is probably enough to get me at least mobile to where I can do some tuning on it and dial in some of the other stuff until I grenade the differential. I did make some preliminary measurements and everything so we can go ahead and get started drilling holes and everything. And he has a an awesome mill here. I guess we're going to be drilling holes and stuff. So yeah, we'll see. The holes. <laughs> right. <laughs> and, and I will uh, link actually Adam's channel up here in the corner and check it out. He builds some really nice stuff. It makes my build look like a piece of junk. So he's got some really cool stuff. You should check it out. His S10 is badass. LS7, everything like that. All right. So we just found true center of our piece. And we got it zeroed out pretty much to uh, half a thousandth of an inch. So we're zeroed out to half a thousandth of an inch. So that's pretty, pretty good for what we're working with here. So we know our true zero. And so now we'll be able to get our very center of this piece. And then we will be able to make our measurements off of the center of it. So everything's nice and centered. You don't want your drive shaft wobbling around like this because the first thing you did was not get it centered. So we're gonna be good there.
All right, so I have machined out a little over five millimeters there. So this little lip right here fits inside of my diff flange. You can see in the blue part right there, we have machined out the six holes that go on the differential side on the BMW. And you can see on the outside of this, there's the four holes for that flange. We countersunk the six holes so we can put that Allen bolt through there. So that Allen bolt sits, you know, below flush. So it's set down in there. So it's countersunk inside of that. So we bolt this to the differential and then we bolt this flange on top of that. And then there's a pilot in the middle of this to kind of center it. You can see we drilled it out to that size. So now we, then we can bolt this flange to that. So now I can make a drive shaft that has U-joints on both sides. And you can see we got a shoulder on that flange. So it sits down inside of that and it can bottom, bottom out down in there. And then it actually bolts from the back side. So therefore I can put all six of my bolts to hold this adapter to the differential. And then I can bolt this adapter to that adapter. So now I get this bolted up. Look at that. All right, now in order to build a drive shaft, you need to have the pinion side, which you can see right here I have. I have my pinion side of my, differ or my drive shaft. And then moving forward, you also have to have your slip yoke side. Now I am running independent rear, so that differential is not gonna really be moving up and down. It should be staying put. So there's not gonna be much slip in and out like there would be on a live rear axle where it can move up and down. To purchase a slip yoke, if you bought a brand new one, they're expensive. They're about $150 to $200 for a slip yoke. And remember when we did the transmission, this had a bolt-on style yoke. Now, this also is an early 4L80E that had an O-ring on the inside of there, which I removed. Luckily, on, you know, 2000s SUVs like the Yukon, Silverado, anything with four-wheel drive, the transfer case output slip yoke is a 1350U joint and I think it's 32 splines, maybe it's 20, so don't quote me on this. Uh, but the spline count is the same as my 4L80E or Turbo 400, and those, you know, those are all the same. The only thing that's not the same is the length. So this thing, if I put in this long one right here, it bottomed out way before I ever got to where the ceiling surface normally was. So what I ended up doing is I cut an inch and a half off of this, I chamfered it, it slides in, and as you can see, my seal rides about the same spot that the original seal did, and I wanna pull it out just a little bit so it's not completely bottomed out in the transmission. Now, I need to make a measurement from the center of this U-joint to the center of this U-joint, and I need to remember that and write it down. So let's just see here. This might be difficult with one person. Let's put that in the corner of that one over to here. So I need 49 and a quarter inches from U-joint to U-joint on my drive shaft. So that means, actually I might be able to order a 48 inch piece of tubing, which is going to be cheaper than the 60 inch piece of tubing I thought I was going to need because the other parts of the drive shaft will take up some of that. So, wow. All right. So on the inside of the drive shaft, we have these yokes that slip in and weld into the inside of the drive shaft. You can see that right there. Notice that the distance from there to the edge of that is, so it's two inches. So we got two inches from the center of that U-joint to this flange right there. So there's one on each end that cuts four inches off of my 48 and a quarter inch drive shaft. So 
If I order a piece of uh, four foot long drive shaft tubing, I should have plenty. I'm gonna be able to cut off about four inches of that in order to get this to work. So that saves me some money on shipping and the actual shaft because they come in one foot length, or you know, uh, whether it's four foot, five foot lengths. And the shorter the actual tube of the drive shaft, the higher the critical speed is. All right, so I got my drive shaft tubing and I cut it down to length. I needed 45 and a quarter of an inch, and that is about what I have. Maybe I left it a little bit long, but we'll see. And I got a hammer there. Let's see what happens. I want to line up my yoke or my U joint cap with this seam that's in this tube. And this is three inch tube with a, an 083 thickness wall tube. That yoke is down, now I just need to weld it in. So you can see my drive shaft here, I have my ends. I have my ends welded on. Now I got my U-joint, it's a 1350 U-joint. That's a 1350 end and a 1350 flange that bolts to my diff adapter bracket, or my differential pinion adapter that we made. Over here, I have the transfer case output uh, slip yoke from a mid 2000 Chevy truck, four wheel drive. I cut it down. Now it should be short enough for my 4L80E. And again, 1350 U-joints. Now I did get the ones that are non-greasable, so they're stronger. So that, that rear end will grenade, most likely. All right, so I'm gonna start out, I'm gonna put my U-joints into the flange and I'm gonna put the U-joint into the slip yoke, and then once those are on there, then I'll put them on the drive shaft. The drive shaft is still cooling from welding it up. All right, so here you see it. I got my slip yoke on that end, and on this end, I have the flange to go to the differential, so let's get it in the vehicle. All right, here we go. Slide the slip yoke into the tail shaft of the transmission, and... Let's see if we can get this one up there. It is just a little bit too tight. I need to give it a little bit of room to grow and move. Um, so I'm just going to take a little bit off of the slip yoke because that's where it's bottoming out. I got it on, I just want a little bit of play. So I guess a quarter inch of play. All right, so you can see I've got my adapter here, my six to four bolt adapter, my four bolt 1350 Spicer flange. Got my drive shaft tube up to another 1350 U-joint. These two weld-in yokes on the end and then my slip yoke right there. All in all, I think we're good. At least I now have a transmission that is attached to a differential. Now, we'll see how that thing holds up, which I'm pretty sure is not going to, and not to mention it's not limited slip. However, it will at least get me to get this thing on the road. <laughs> 